Okay, so we're reading for Monday, um, the chapters on feminism and on queer theory. And I'm combining them because the two theories are actually really hard to separate in practice. Um, they have different histories, but they have blended together over the last however many years, so that it's almost weird to talk about one without talking about the other. Um, especially once we start to interrogate identity and what feminist and feminine actually mean. So that's why we're reading too. I also find the chapters in Bressler not captivating. So I'm going to point out the things in here that I'm going to want you to pay special attention to, but they should be pretty easy for you to read independently. Okay, I'm just going to walk through the chapters and I have a few things I want to mention. One is that for Simone de Beauvoir, women are created as other. Women are um, othered, we would say now, meaning that the ideal subject, ideal in part meaning idea, is um, male and that women are somehow marked or different from men. And then Kate Millett goes on to say, and other people have talked about this before also, that females are born, but women are created. We're gonna talk about this a lot when we get to Judith Butler on Wednesday, but the idea here is that sex, which is, your private areas determine whether you're male or female and then gender is the way you identify as maybe a man or a woman and Kate Millett's pointing out that you might be born female but that you have to construct a gender womanhood that's independent from whatever sex you were assigned at birth um, okay on page 153 there under Elaine Showalter is a bunch of information. In the last paragraph on Showalter, um, Bressler points out that feminist criticism talks about the female body, talks about female discourse, and talks about the female psyche. And all of these are different ways of approaching feminism and feminist theory. Is there such a thing as feminine discourse, language that works differently than the language of men? Which would mean, can we move out of the symbolic order? Can women speak as women? Um, what would it mean just practically or material to be, materially to be a woman who writes? Is it harder for women to write? because women are raising babies and earn less than men, maybe. Um, and then, uh, I think that's it until we get to French feminism on 150, which I kind of talked about already actually, but there's a good summary of Sixou here, which we are reading for next Friday, um, talking about l'écriture féminine, feminine writing. Um, and she describes that as bisexual, but not the way that we mean bisexual, but that writing can be both um, uh, for women and for men. And it reminds me of something that Deb said in class when we were talking about Mulvey, that patriarchy hurts men and women. And that bisexuality is something that allows women and men to embrace themselves in some fuller way instead of having to cut off a feminine side or a masculine side. Okay, if we skip ahead to the section on queer theory, um, we get all of these quotations, reviews of Brokeback Mountain as if that film had just come out. Okay. Um, and then this, the um, uh, chapter develops by talking about a lot of the things that are important for feminist criticism as well, like the nature of not just sex and gender, but here sexuality as being constructed, as being a thing that we just um, 
create a box for and that that box may or may not work for a variety of people and we may or may not need the boxes at all. Um, okay, there's two more things I want to say in here. One of them is um, the way in which language or these boxes are constructed the way in which these boxes are constructed has a lot to do with language, the way we talk about these things and the words that are available to us, words in this uh, psychoanalytic sense, but also words like identities, like demisexual or um, biromantic. These are new identifications that one might have that were unavailable 10 years ago. And yet, so that language is extremely helpful for a lot of people. And yet it also just creates more boxes if we're still locked into phallocentrism or language that's somehow um, determining an identity. Okay, the second thing I want to talk about here is, um, is uh, they've got it, Bressler has it under Sedgwick, but we're going to talk about it. Um, when we talk about Butler as well, that gender, sex, sexuality, all of this is performative, which, is, which means two things. One is that we actually perform it the way you would perform in a play, that there's no um, uh, ideal gay person or ideal woman and we're all sort of trying to be like that, but that all gender is just what we who identify as a certain thing um, or sexuality or even sex just act like. And that that's the whole construction, that just what we're acting like is what it means to be woman, to be gay, to be biromantic. Um, okay. The rest of this we'll just talk about on Monday. And one thing I'm going to ask you on Monday, and you can think about it over the weekend or whenever you happen to watch this, is whether you identify as a feminist or not, and if so, why or why not. And um, I'm also going to ask you about um, how we feel about LGBTQIA plus as a kind of label and what that asks of us. Okay, I'll see you Monday.